Jerusalem, Chol HaMoed Sukkot, the year 2008. It's near midnight as tens of Jews are preparing for a long ride. In the meantime, thousands of Jews from all over the country get ready to make their way in a bus similar to this. They are all going to Joseph's tomb in Shechem. Why? What is everyone looking for in Joseph's tomb and in the middle of the night? What is so special about Joseph's tomb? Joseph's tomb is mentioned in the Bible, both in the Chumash and the Prophets. And Yaakov came to Shalem, a city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan. And he bought the piece of land on which he spread his tent at the hand of the children of Hamor, Shechem's father, for a hundred pieces of money. And the bones of Yosef, which the children of Israel brought up out of Egypt, they buried in Shechem, in a section of ground which Yaakov bought from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for a hundred pieces of money. And they became the inheritance of the children of Yosef. The tradition as to the location of Joseph's tomb has been preserved and passed down over the years. The ancient Madaba map from the 7th century mentions Joseph's tomb near Shechem. 600 years later, a Jewish traveler writes, And from there, I went to Shechem and saw the grave site of the righteous Joseph, son of Jacob, which was situated between two marble pillars, one at its head and one at its feet. Throughout all of history, Jews made the pilgrimage to the grave site of Yosef HaTzadik, Joseph the Righteous One to pray and pour out their supplications to God. They are attracted to the figure of Joseph because of his noble and righteous character as mentioned in the Bible. For decades, the yeshiva Od Yosef Chai, located near Joseph's tomb in the city of Shechem, was a place where people of all ages came to pray and engage in deep study of the Torah. In addition to the numerous visitors to the holy site, there existed a permanent yeshiva of Torah scholars studying Torah daily with great self-sacrifice. But during the Second Intifada in September 2000, on the second day of Rosh Hashanah, Joseph's tomb was attacked by Palestinians. One of the soldiers defending the site was injured and killed. In the aftermath of the attack, the Palestinians take control of the area from the IDF, promising to honor the sanctity of the site. But. The moment the IDF withdraws from the area, Joseph's tomb is desecrated. Torah scrolls are burned. The entire area ransacked and vandalized. Several years after that, Jews are not permitted to visit Joseph's tomb. When I look down to Kever Yosef, I feel that we've sold our brother for a second time. <laughs> We see what a farce that was. Uh, this was supposed to be one of the fundamental things, that they are going to protect us. Something that I never believed was going to happen, and something that the whole world sees uh, has not happened. It is obvious that the Palestinian Authority has not complied uh, with the stipulations that they provide free and unfettered access to all Jewish holy sites. The Jewish people have a right to the land of Israel. They have a right to their holy places. Today, through great efforts, Jews are returning to Joseph's tomb. The government is giving permission for only one visit a month. In the middle of the night, with a massive army escort, and for only a few thousand Jews each time. On the nights in which Jews are allowed to visit, there is great excitement and anticipation. Tens of buses from all over Israel are filled with Jews who come to pour out their hearts and bask in the holiness of the righteous Yosef. It is an atmosphere of spiritual elevation and sanctity.
I hadn't been aware of before, of the power of Yosef. It was almost like a magnetic draw for people. And I'm not sure many of them could even explain it themselves. Kaver Yosef is not only holy, but it's part of our heart and part of our soul and part of who we are. He was a uh, personality who could uh, be the viceroy, uh, second only to the pharaoh in Egypt, but yet still maintain his Misara, still maintain his tradition and his Jewish identity. That's why he is so important to us, to the Jewish people. <laughs> It's inspiring to see the thousands of people who are coming out in the middle of the night to take part in this event. And this brings us further to our ultimate goal of re-establishing Kevri Yosef. And I'm sure that we will reach that goal. The variety of different kinds of people who came, I think it's impossible to generalize and label them as anything because I mean, you had the grandmothers from Ranana and Hasidim from Bnei Brak and people who actually in normal life would probably not have that much in common with each other. By continuing to visit Keva Yosef, we're showing the government and our people and our kids how important it is to maintain our rights and our connections with our heritage in this country. <laughs> After great effort, a small flickering light was ignited on Hanukkah of 2008. A team of Jewish workers accompanied by the IDF entered Shechem and rebuilt Joseph's tomb. The restoration is a small part in an overall effort to return Jewish sovereignty and dignity to the historical site. We, we intend to come in and rebuild the, the roof of the building and to finish renovating the entire building and to continue and demand the regular access for Jews, to Jews, for Jews to be able to enter Kevi Yosef every day. Without that access uh, to our holy sites, to our legacy, we have no future. Thank God there are people who care, and all of the Jewish people need to support the efforts. They need to be involved. Joseph's tomb, Kever Yosef, the gravesite of one of our nation's forefathers, is again becoming a place where multitudes of Jews visit and pray. In a continuous chain, generation after generation of Jews continue the tradition of visiting their patriarch to pray for themselves, for their land, and for their nation. Today, there is an opportunity to strengthen our Jewish hold on the site. Ensuring that this site remains in Jewish hands is fulfilling the legacy of our Holy Father, Yosef HaTzadik. <laughs>